Good morning, and welcome to this edition of Medical Minutes. I am Dr. Peter Rosato, your host and moderator. Today's topic is medication safety. I have with me Lori Smith from Passivan Hospital. Lori is a registered pharmacist. She is the director of the pharmacy department and has participated in many patient forums on medication safety. Lori, thank you for being with us today. I want to start it off with some common medication safety do's and some of the don'ts. Okay. Well, I think the single most important medication safety do that you can do is to have a complete and up-to-date medication list with you at all times. Uh, you want to make it somewhere where it's accessible, you know, your wallet, your purse, even your cell phone case, somewhere where it's accessible to you at all times. You want to make sure that that list is complete and by complete, I mean it needs to contain not only your prescription medications. I think most of us think to put our prescription medications on there. But we also want to make sure that any over-the-counter medications that you might be using are included in that list. And any dietary or herbal supplements you might be taking are included in that list. Those types of things are often not considered medications, but they truly are. And they can play a role in providing you the best possible care. So your prescribers need to know about those medications when you're taking them. And an up-to-do list would also include just even uh, changes of the dosage or times at which we take the medications, correct? Absolutely. It's important that we have the correct dose on your up to, on your list. It's important that anytime you go to the doctor's office, you have a doctor's visit or you have a hospital visit, if there's any changes made, that those changes are also included on that list. I would also go as far as to say you should keep an up-to-date list of anybody else that's in your household as well. For instance, since I have a spouse and two children in my home, and it's a good idea that I keep a list for them as well. You don't want to end up in a situation where you're somewhere where your spouse or another loved one cannot verbalize for themselves, but if you happen to find yourself in that situation, you need to be able to provide the medications to their healthcare providers. And it also helps clarify for that person in case there's any confusion, you can answer their questions about, do I take this medication two or three times a day? Absolutely, yes. How about keeping a list of allergies and things like that? You need to keep a list that includes your medication allergies as well as any food allergies you might have. Some other common medication do's I would consider is make sure that uh, you use only one pharmacy. I'm not advocating for one over the other, but it's important that all your prescriptions are filled in the same place so that that pharmacist there can have a complete list and do a complete review of all your medications to make sure you're safe. By being in one pharmacy, they can look for possible drug-drug interactions and even over-the-counter medication interactions with that or anything that you're possibly allergic to, they would be able to forewarn you that this medication is a possible contraindicated medication. Absolutely, they could do that. And, you know, if you're getting them filled at different pharmacies, they're not going to have the complete picture and be able to do that for you. Any other um, medication do's that you want to t talk over? I think a few other things to say is we need to make sure that we read our labels carefully. We need to make sure that we're taking our prescriptions exactly as they're prescribed by our physician. In reading the labels, I, that also includes your over-the-counter medications. One thing people don't often consider over-the-counter medications as being something that can cause harm, but if they are not taken the right way, they can certainly cause harm. For example, there's a common medication called Prilosec that's over-the-counter. Lots of people take it, it's for reflux, but if you read the package insert, it's or you read the labeling, it indicates you should not take it for any longer than two weeks without being under the care of a provider. And that's because there are risks associated with long term use of that, that if you're going to be taking it longer than that, it needs to be under the care and monitoring of a healthcare provider. So we really need to make sure that we're reading those over-the-counter labels and taking them as they're intended. Another common thing are cough and cold preparations. Oftentimes those contain multiple ingredients in those products. And a lot of times they'll contain acetaminophen, which is the brand name or the generic name for Tylenol, or they'll contain ibuprofen, which is the generic name for Advil or Motrin. And people will often double up on the doses, and that can cause problems as well. So you have to be aware of all the labels for all your medications, including your over-the-counter medications. I also counsel my geriatric population is get in the habit of putting your glasses on when you open up the container for the medication, because a lot of medications 
look alike. A lot of medications, their spelling is very the same, and they can get it confused. I mean, it's very easy to do that when you can't read the fine uh, label. The other thing is I always say if you have a spouse or another loved one, keep your medication from theirs completely separate so you don't get any confusion, correct? Correct, completely separate. You do not want to share medications with your spouse or loved one. I know it's very tempting to do so, but your your medications are prescribed for you, and when they're prescribed, they're prescribed knowing your conditions. Your loved one could have a condition that you don't have that may have a severe interaction with one of the medications that you're taking. So you never want to share medications with anyone. And I think that was a really good point about wearing your glasses. Even simple things that you might not think about as simple as don't take your medications in the dark because you may think you've got them set in a certain row, but you really don't. Or don't take them when you're sleepy because we're a little bit more confused when we're sleepy. That's why I was also saying because you could have a spouse taking the same medication but a different dosage and you just look at it and this is Prilosec but theirs is a different dose so you don't want your bottles even next to each other. Absolutely, absolutely. And when you're talking about storage, where you store your medications is also important. A lot of us tend to use the bathroom or the kitchen as our primary storage areas and if you think about bathrooms, they're really not a good place to store your medications. It's a very humid, wet environment as well as temperature fluctuates a lot in the bathroom. So it's really not a good place to actually store medications. I understand why people tend to go to the kitchen or the bathroom. It makes it part of their daily routine and helps incorporate, and that's great for compliance. But bathrooms are really not a good place to store your medications. Kitchens are okay as long as you don't have them near your stove. A lot of people just set them on top of their stove, or you don't have them just sitting on your kitchen table. You want to make sure that they are up and secure and always, always out of reach of children. I always caution some of my patients, too. They get in the habit of opening these child-resistant caps right in over the sink and a lot of times the pills all pop out they go right down the drain and that's something that they should shouldn't be doing but it, it always happens but we can counsel them now not to do that please absolutely yes anything about how where to d- dispose of outdated medications you really should go through your medication cabinet at least once a year and look for outdated medications and don't ever take outdated medications. Sometimes they just lose potency, but sometimes they can become harmful. So you don't ever want to take outdated medications. What I would recommend is the city of Jacksonville has a um, usually once a year, sometimes twice a year, a drug take back day. That's really the safest place you can take your medications back. I know it's not offered as frequently as some may like, but it's a very good service that the city provides for us. And it ensures that the drugs are disposed of properly and that there's a right that there's proper security you can also check with your local retail pharmacy some pharmacies will take back medications some will not so you'll have to check with each one individually to see what their individual policy is what is your opinion uh, you always hear of patients saying well i'm just going to flush it down the toilet well That's not really recommended to have your medications flushed down the toilet. That can uh, cause problems with our water supply. So I would would really avoid it, and I would use the drug take-back days whenever possible. What's your opinion on using a uh, medication pill organizer or a pill box or anything like that? I'm a little torn on using a pill organizer. It's very good in the fact that it can help organize your day and when to take your medications. You know, they have the nice AM, PM, those kinds of things. However, once you take it out of that original container, you might not necessarily remember what it is. And so that can cause a problem. Also, if you're trying to update your medication list, it may be difficult to update your medication list. If you're going into the hospital and there's a possibility you want to consider using your own medications for one reason or another, we really can't use those medications that aren't in the original containers. I would really suggest you leave them in the original containers if at all possible. And speaking of... uh leaving in the original containers. A lot of times the elderly or patients in general do a lot of flying or going overseas. That's where I counsel them. They need to keep it in the original container, number one, and also do not put it in their check-in luggage because check-in luggage gets lost. And if you can keep it with a carry-on, that way if your luggage is lost, you have your access to your medication, correct? Absolutely. Definitely a good point there. Especially if it's a narcotic. I mean, narcotics are hard to transfer around, basically. And if you're putting in a 
just a regular pill container and the TSA looks at that, they're probably going to confiscate it from you. You're probably going to get your medication confiscated if you don't have it in the original container. And, you know, your destination may be somewhere where you can hit a Walgreens and transfer your prescriptions if that's, you know, how you feel, where you get your prescriptions filled. But when it comes to controlled substances, those are a little bit more difficult to get those transferred and, and to be able to get another supply. And we certainly wouldn't want you to be on vacation and not have all the pain, all the medications you might need. One other little tip constantly happens in my office. It happens in every physician's office where they'll call and my answering service on a Saturday, I'm leaving town right now and I'm out of my medication and I don't have a refill. I caution patients to look for their refills way before it's due. Don't do it on a Saturday when there's physicians aren't in their office, you need to think and schedule about this a little bit ahead of time, correct? Yes, and that will, your refill will be listed on your prescription label. Lots of pharmacies have auto refill services that you can check out, so you never run out. So that's a good thing to look into if your pharmacy may provide that. And the other thing is with narcotics, as you know, last October, the laws changed. Physicians cannot, and I repeat, cannot call in a refill for an, a narcotic. It has to be a face-to-face encounter and a prescription. We can't even do it electronically. So whether you want to admit it or not, when it's on a Saturday, we cannot call it in. That is correct, especially a Schedule two, which the common medication Vicodin or Norco is considered a spe- Schedule two now, and there are a lot stricter rules around Schedule two prescriptions, absolutely. I think we've exhausted the do's. What are some of the don'ts? Some of the don'ts. Do not crush your tablets or break or chew them unless you know that it's okay to do that by your prescriber or by your pharmacist. Lots of tablets will have a a line down the middle that's scored that will show you that it can be broken, but you always want to check and make sure that this tablet can be chewed or broken or dumped open uh, because there are actually controlled uh, release medications that release the amount of medication over an extended period of time. And if you were to crush one of those medications, you would get all the dose that's intended to be delivered to you over like a 24-hour period of time in, in just a short period of time, and that could be very dangerous. Don't combine prescription and over, over-the-counter medications or herbal medications without checking with your doctor or pharmacist. You want to make sure that if you're thinking you're going to add a new supplement or su- a new dietary supplement that uh, you've heard of something about, I would always check with your prescriber or your pharmacist to make sure that there's no interactions with that medication. So don't just uh, make that change without getting some good information about that. We already talked about don't take somebody else's medications and then don't take your medications in the dark or without your glasses. Those those kinds of things. Do you have any tips for uh, people with children or how to get them to take medications or to store the medications? Sure. Uh, one, the main thing I can say, one of the first things you should know is you should always know your child's weight. Lots of medications are dosed on the on the patient's weight. And so if you're taking your child for a visitor to the hospital, of course, at a doctor's office, they're going to weigh your child and we'll weigh your child at the hospital too. But it's always a good idea if you're medicating your child at home with an over-the-counter medication that you know your child's weight so that we can you can ensure that you have the appropriate dose. And always use the measuring device that the pharmacy will provide. You want to make sure that you use the measuring device provided as opposed to a general household teaspoon or something like that. It, those Household teaspoons do not measure accurately, and you want to make sure that you have the right dose for your child. And I know it's very tempting to call medicine candy or try to make a game of it to get get your child to take that medication, but you really want to steer away from doing that. You don't want to make the child think that this is candy and the next thing you know they're trying to take it just when they don't need it because they think it's candy. Lots of things can be flavored, so you can always ask at your pharmacy if there's a possibility of having something flavored. That's always an option that is out there now that wasn't so much a few years ago. And moms, be aware of your purse. I have teenagers now, but knowing when I had infants and toddlers, you always have the big diaper bag or the big purse, the big mom purse, as everybody calls it, that has just about everything under the sun in it. And there's usually some medications in there, but there's also usually something else in there that can be pretty harmful to your child. So you want to make sure that those things are secure and your infants and toddlers and preschool kids don't have access to your purse. 
of course, keep it in the child resistant container so the children can't get it. Keep it out of their reach. Those are Absolutely. just common yes. sense things. Uh, uh, well, Lori, great information. Do you have anything else that you want to tell our listening audience just in case we didn't cover that subject? I, I would, first of all, I, I would encourage all our listeners to use the pharmacist as a resource. They are part of the healthcare team. Feel free to ask them any questions. They got a, a wealth of knowledge and they can clear up any kinds of controversies or some questions, correct? Absolutely, that's what we're there for. And a few things you should remember when you walk out of the pharmacy that you should know about your medications that you would wanna ask the pharmacist. Know what that medication, the name of that medication you're taking. Know what it is and know why you're taking it. What does this medication do? How much should I take of it? Are there any food or drinks or activities I should avoid while I'm using this medication? Are there any side effects I should be aware of while I'm using this medication? If you're walking out of the pharmacy with a prescription and you don't have the answers to those questions, those are the things you need to ask. Well, thank you very much for coming here and providing us with that uh, very useful and, and great safety information. Thanks for listening and